One of the shadows that looms over the internet is the issue of personal security. There's identity theft and scams, and most terrifying to parents, predators on the internet. So how do we protect ourselves, our families, and our kids in a world where the rules change so often? We face a situation now where kids are more comfortable in the internet world than their parents are. They spend more time online, they use more of the features on the internet than their folks do. So how do we protect our kids in a world that we barely understand? Well, it's tough. But we need to make the effort. And I think the best place to start is by embracing the technology ourselves. Now, you don't have to become as addicted to internet chat as your kids are, but you should at least have a working knowledge. So, as I mentioned before, you can start by signing up for the same IM service that your kids have and use it regularly. But chat is only one area of concern. The whole idea of social networking is another area that you should educate yourself on and be concerned with. Now, social network sites are sites like MySpace and Blogger and Friendster. These are a big part of the internet social life and they're springing up all over. Social networking sites have become very popular with kids and these sites have a lot to offer. But there's something compelling about them. They give us the potential to meet new people and to hear new ideas and share our thoughts and opinions with our friends. The music industry has made great use of social sites to expose new artists and talent to audiences that are otherwise unreachable. Let's have a look at this starting at MySpace, which is one of the first of this genre. Now, I've set up an account, and accounts are free. And if you take a look, you can tell that the accounts are free because this is definitely not a spam-free zone. So places like MySpace make a lot of their profit by selling ads. So there's pop-up ads and that stuff all over the place. But if we look at the basic structure of this site, they all change slightly, but there is areas that we can go to find different things that we're interested in. We can browse and search for individuals that we might want to make our friends. But one of the most compelling areas on these sites is the music area. In this particular case, if we go in here, we'll find that a variety of bands and musicians have created their own MySpace pages. A variety. Right? Thousands, ten, hundreds of thousands of artists have put up their sites. So you find an area of music that you like, you click in that area, say acoustic music, and you'll see artists. Now, not just small-time artists, not just boutique artists, but big artists. Garth Brooks has a MySpace site. It gives them all access to their fans. So you can find the large and the small here. Now, if we go to, into any one of these artists' sites, we're going to find samples of their music. Maybe they'll let you download songs for free. You're also going to find comments from their fans and things like upcoming shows, places that they're going to be performing. So this gives artists tremendous contact with their fan base and allows fans to find new artists. It looks good so far, right? Well, the problem, though, from a parent's perspective, is how much information your kids are publishing onto their pages in MySpace and who's gaining access to their information. Let me explain it to you by showing you my profile. Your profile is what you set up when you first set up your MySpace page, and it tells people your interests. Things like, I'm a busy dad, I'd like to meet this person, my interests are fly fishing, and nothing else. The music I like, the movies I like, the TV shows I like. This is all stuff that I want to share with my new friends. The problem is that there's no controls on who gains access to that information unless I put those controls in myself. MySpace or any of the other social networking sites don't really check to see that you are who you say you are, and they don't set up any rules for searching and, uh, and protecting your privacy. You have to do all of that yourself. And the reason that's important is within MySpace and all the social networking sites, people can search based on similar interests just by going into search area. Or even more interesting or disturbing is they can actually browse through all of the people on MySpace. And when you go into browse, for example, I set myself up as a 48-year-old male. I don't know why it set these up as the defaults, but I'm going to search for women between 18 and 35, and then I determine... It's kind of like a meat market, isn't it? If single or in a relationship, if they're swingers, and then you get the list of people. So I can now browse through and start to meet these women. But I can change that criteria. I could say I'm a 14-year-old boy looking to meet other 14-year-old boys, or I'm a 12-year-old girl meeting the other 12-year-old girls. There's no control set on from MySpace's perspective. So you have to protect yourself, or your kids have to protect themselves. And how they do that is by going into their account settings and setting up a different set of rules allowing people not to gain access to their information unless they're a friend that they know already. And we do that, as I said, in account settings. You'll always find an area like privacy settings in all of the social networking sites. With your kids, if they're going to set up an account like this, go into their privacy settings with them and do this. Find the area that you can disable their full profile 
from public view and make it so only friends can gain access to your children's profile. That way only the people that they know gain access and people who they don't know can't introduce themselves and have all that information, be armed with all that information as they introduce themselves to your kids. Now this isn't enough information at all for you to really start to protect yourself. There's also some really good resources online for you to visit that will act as guides and will give you better advice on how to be safer on the net. Now we'll provide all these links on our website so go to dottotech.com and look them up but in a nutshell the Canadian government has some great resources at safecanada.ca. Internet 101 is another great resource that gives parents and kids a lot of tools to provide more knowledge about making themselves safe online. Now, I can't encourage you strongly enough to spend some time exploring the world that your children live in day by day. Best way to understand it is to take part in it, not just poke around in it. The Internet has changed our socialization for all time. It may or may not be for the better, but it's changed. So heads out of the sand, people. we got a generation to guide. And the best way to guide them is to learn the lay of the land. I'll see you on the net. For more information about any of the products we cover on the show, drop by our website at dottotech.com.